Happy Chinese Year to all our Chinese brothers and sisters. Welcome home, all of you. Welcome home. You know, in Tabernacle of Worship, whether you're Chinese, you're Indian, you're Punjabi, or whatever race you're from, you know, uh, you are most welcome here. You know, there's no difference between the races. In the church, we practice, uh, we are all one. We are all one in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Come on, say to the person next to you, we are all one in the Lord. Amen. We are all one in the Lord. It's just that we all have different attitudes and character, that's all. Right? And uh, the Lord is working in every one of our lives to, to unite us, to, to mature us, to grow us, to help us become better in this area. So we are into our message again uh, on who God is, this three months emphasis. And uh, first of all, we I say to all of you, welcome home to the Tabernacle of Worship. Amen. Welcome home. Say to the person next to you, welcome home. Uh, for those of you who are visiting us, we have a big sign at the back on top. They say, welcome home. This is our big family, our big home. All right. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Hebrew word, the Hebrew name for God as my shepherd is Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah Rohi. And I want to read Psalms 23. When was the last time you and I read Psalms 23? Psalms 23 is the most famous psalm in the book of Psalms. And uh, no other person can write this psalm under the unction of the Spirit of God and the power of God and the anointing of the Spirit of God but David. Why? We will know afterwards in a while. But let's read Psalms 23 together if you may follow me. Okay? Let's read. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the paths for His name's sake. That's all for a while. Can you join me? Very lonely up here reading. Right now, it's very lonely. Huh? I don't know whether sometimes you feel that way as well. All right, read together with me. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley or the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for reading the scriptures with me. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we look to your word this morning and we ask you to speak to us. Challenge us with your word so that we can better understand and grow in you and uh, understand who our God is better. Another step deeper, another step greater. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Alexander McLaren says this. The world could spare many a large book better than this sunny little sum. It has dried many tears, supplied the, the mold into which many hearts have poured their peaceful faith. You know, as we continue our understanding and learning about who God is. This psalm introduced to us the tenderest of God's name, the tenderest of God's character and God's nature. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. In this psalm, we find the name, the character and the meaning of Jehovah Rohi. In this psalm, we get to know God, not just as God who sits on the throne and rule, but He is also a God who resides in every one of our hearts when we receive Him into our heart as our God and personal Savior to guide us, to shepherd us. There are a few things I want to share with you this morning very quickly. Number one, the declaration of His name. If it's called Jehovah Rohi, if it's called the Lord, is my shepherd. 
What about this name, shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23 verse 1, the first part says, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, Martin Luther said this, faith is a matter of personal pronouns. Faith is a matter of personal pronouns. Many a time we don't treat God as personal. Many a times our walk with God, and when things didn't go the way we want to go, we push the button, we, we point our finger, except because of you, because of you, and because of you, and because of them, and because of you, God. The great reformer Martin Luther says, faith is a matter of personal pronouns. God is not someone far away. He is deep within us. He is in us. He is near us. If you look at this verse, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, it is not on the LCD, uh, LED, but I want to tell you, you know, it's interesting when I read this phrase over and over and over again, I came up with three things. One, the Lord is my shepherd. The word Lord is in capital. The Lord is my shepherd. It's a declaration of God's role. God is not our, only our Lord, not only our Savior, but His role is to shepherd us. His role is to take care of us. And the second part, as I read through, is this, the Lord is mine. A capital M, shepherd. It is the statement of relationships. Many a times we know God just as God distant far away, but God said to you and I, if I am your shepherd, I want it to be a personal relationship. I want you to look at me. I want you to identify me as not someone else God, as your God. Not someone else Lord, as your Lord. Not someone else shepherd, as your shepherd. And then as I read again, and, and I came up with this, the Lord is my shepherd. The word shepherd, testimony of what God's responsibility, not only God's role as the Lord, but it's God's responsibility to care for his sheep. That's why Martin Luther say, faith is a matter of personal pronouns. <laughs> he is not distant, it is not far away, it's not someone else. Faith, it is my personal experience with my personal God. You know, I came across this guy who wrote, his name is James Montgomery Boyce says, the 22 Psalms, is a masterpiece throughout. But if ever a psalm could stand a single line of phrase, it is this one. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. If anyone understood what it meant to be a shepherd, it is David. That's why it was Psalm of David. Why having tendering, tender sheep? Uh, uh, himself, he understood the responsibility, the sacrifice, the value of making provision. Pasturing, caring and protecting the fragile animals. We too, the Bible tells us, we are like sheep in need. We in need of a shepherd, whether you know, like, no matter how intelligent, how capable, what degree you may have. How much money, how much finances you and I have. Hey, all these things will not last, but the Lord will last. Jesus will last. We all need a shepherd. If we are left to ourselves, we will destroy ourselves. We really do need Jesus to help us. In these two things I want to share with you, First of all, who is our shepherd? Jesus. Who is Jesus? He is my propitiation. He is my propitiation. What does my propitiation mean? To propitiate means to win, to regain the favor of a God or a person by doing something that pleases Him. You know what? The, you know who? Why is He called my pr propitiator? Because He did something that pleases God. He died on my behalf. He atoned for my sin. Jesus died for my sin. Jesus did some because of sin, men were departed from God. Because of sin, men were, were, were go to hell. Because of sin, men cannot come to God. But Jesus did something great. He died on the cross for you and I. 
He did something good on our behalf. Jesus made a man for our sin by sacrificing himself on the cross. The first thing to settle in our life on this psalm is whether the Lord is a shepherd or the Lord is my shepherd. One more time. The first thing we need to settle as we walk in to this psalm is that whether the Lord is a shepherd or the Lord is my shepherd. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on Him the sins of all, of us all. The Bible says we are all sinners. The Bible says because of sin, we cannot come to God. Our sin, because of our sin, God sent His Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life, have eternal life. And God placed the punishment on His Son he did something good on our behalf so that we may have favor back with God. He died on our behalf, the blood that He shed, so that our sins are forgiven. The Bible tells us also in John 10 verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Everybody say good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus was willing to surrender his life so that you and I may have life. Jesus is willing to walk down the valley of the shadow of death so that you and I may see light in the shadow. Jesus did all that He can do so that you and I may find favor with God. You know, just in the first part, you know, C.S. Lewis, I was just reading through his books recently. C.S. Lewis says this, It costs God nothing as far as we know to create nice things, but to convert a rebellious will. It costs Him crucifixion. You know, when God created this heaven and earth, He created by the voice, His own voice. Everything nice came forth. He just said, it is so, it shall be done. Come forth, it come forth. But to, to convert, to, to, to save someone and, and, and to change a rebellious person, it caused His crucifixion. It caused Him to die on the cross. Notice, is God just a shepherd? Or is he your shepherd? Church, you know what? 2020, make God not just a shepherd. Make the Lord your shepherd. Make the Lord my shepherd. The second part of this, you know, on the area, the declaration of the name that he is my shepherd. And Jesus, our good shepherd, provides. As a shepherd, you know what he does for us? He provides for us. He nurtures us. He guides us. He cares for us. He protects us. He blesses us. There is nothing in our areas of life and living and need that God is not able to help. He is able. If Jesus is willing to die on the cross for you and I, it says a whole lot of His dying. That is like He loves you so much, He's willing to give His life. There's nothing that He cannot do for you if it is the will of the Father for your life and for my life. Look here, church, listen here. Jesus doesn't just want to be your Savior. He also wants to be your Lord. One more time. Jesus doesn't just want to be your Savior. He also wants to be your Lord. He doesn't want to give you eternal life. Just you know, one more time. He doesn't just want to give you eternal life. He also wants to give you an abundant life here on earth. That you enjoy your life. Not getting around, getting angry, you know, fighting and getting upset and pointing finger and, and disappointed with this and disappointed with that and disappointed with that. Hey, He not only give you eternal life in heaven, but He give you an abundant life. How to enjoy the best of our Christian faith, our Christian life on this earth. He never promised you and I the road, the road to you and I tread on will be smooth. But He said to you and I, I am your shepherd. I will guide you through. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Eternal life is one day we will live with God. Abundant life is how you enjoy your life 
and the experiences of the Christian faith that God has placed in your life. Don't just long towards the coming of the Lord and, the, and, and, and when, when we leave and this earth and go to be with God. But tell the Lord, God, you know what? You not only gave me eternal life, you also give me abundant life. How I can live and enjoy my life as a Christian. Some of us have not smiled for a long, long time. Even Chinese New Year come. You know what, church? Learn to smile. It takes about 113 muscles on your face to frown. 145 muscles on your face to get angry and grain your teeth. But you only take three muscles to smile. Why? Why go and do facial? When we can just relax and smile more. Turn the person next to you. Smile more. <laughs> so it's a uh, long time never smiled before. <laughs> you know? You got it? The declaration of the name. The Lord is my shepherd. He is my propitiation. And he is also my shepherd. Secondly, the distribution of his name. You know, as I was reading through Psalm 23, I, I break into parts and I bring you through Canada very quickly. All right, I got 24 minutes. Okay, let's go. The distribution of his name. Psalms 23, verse 1, second part. Where it says, The Lord is my shepherd. And it says, I lack nothing. I lack nothing. The kingdom says, I shall not be in one. You know, I lack nothing. Because the Lord is all sufficient, the Lord is all knowing, the Lord is all powerful. Shepherd, we therefore lack nothing. The truth is, if left to ourselves or left to themselves, sheep lack everything. Do you know sheep is the most helpless animals on the face of this earth? Do you know that? Sheep, if it's left to themselves, they will not be able to find food to eat. They will not be able to go the way they're supposed to go. If you send them out to a field, they will not be able to get home. That's why they have dogs and they have ranchers and they have shepherds. And uh, we too, as human beings, as Christians, we too have great need. With the Lord Jesus as our shepherd, He is able to provide for all those needs in our lives. He's able to guide us in all areas. Let me bring you through a few things very quickly. Number one, one, if he is, uh, in, as far as the name of God is concerned, Jesus Christ is our shepherd. Number one, I shall lack, not lack provision. If he is my shepherd, he will make sure your needs are met. Psalms 23 verse 2 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside quiet waters. You know, Philip Keller, uh, one of the earliest book I got is quite old already. One of the earliest book I bought when I was in Bible school on the book of Psalms. He said this, the sheep do not lie down easily. That was back in 1983. All right? He said, sheep do not lie down easily. It, it's almost impossible for sheep to be made to lie down unless four requirements are met. You want sheep? I'm not talking about a goat, I'm talking about sheep. They will not lie down unless there are four things met in their lives. One, free of fear. They must feel safe, then they will lie down. You got it? Two, free of friction. They must feel accepted that the shepherd loved them. Everybody loved one another. Everybody consider one another. Everybody accept one another. They feel they must be free, free of friction. They must feel accepted. Three, they must be free of flies. They must be free of pestilence. That means insects, they will not come and disappear. You know what's the weakest part in the, in, 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 in the sheep on the face? It is the ear and the nose. One more time. It is the ear and the nose. I, I was reading through and I was saying, you know, why the ear and the, the nose? Do you know, you, you look at the sheep itself, 
God will turn the ear and chase the flies away, but not the sheep. Flies will come and lay their eggs on the ear, and worms will come in the ear. Why the nose? The tenderest part of the sheep's face is his nose. It's very tender and it's very really reddish in color, pinkish in color. Easily bruised, easily hurt. How many of you know the devil does that as well? He's shooting to your ear, negative remarks. He's shooting to your ear, things that are not so good, not so kind, not so right. He, no wonder Jesus said, you know, when, 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 uh, uh, take up your whole armor, you know, put on the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, because you know why? But why? So that you can stop the flaming arrows of the enemy from coming to you, right? Hello? Isn't that what the Bible says? Yeah. You know what's the first thing the devil does? To destroy your trust, your faith, and your hope in God and in people is when the devil can shoot an arrow into your mind, through your ear. You change your whole concept of people. You change your whole concept of God change your whole concept of your circumstances and your situation. <laughs> the fourth thing is this, free of famine, they must be filled with food. You know, when a sheep goes to a, 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 a land that is without grass, even though they will, they, will, they will stand, they will not lie down because there's nothing cooling grass cool their bodies. Only a shepherd can meet these requirements providing peace, acceptance, deliverance, and pastures. You know, the wonderful thing about God is this. He knows our need because He knows who we are and is able to take care of all our needs. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, everybody read with me if you may. And my God will supply and meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. He said, my God. Everybody said, my God. My God. He did not say, and God. He said, God must be personal. Not the God of my father, but my own God. You realize the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Do you know every time their faith is hooked on to their father, their grandfather, but until they have a personal experience with God, then they become their personal God. Jacob have a personal experience, right? Isaac have a personal experience. It's good to know God has been very good to my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and my mother, and my sister, and my father. But I need to know how good God is to my life as well. It must be a personal, pronounced, a personal encounter. A personal experience. My God will supply. Not His God. Not their God. My God shall supply all my needs. And our shepherd longs to meet our needs as He leads us, as He steers us, as He guides us to one thing that is so important. You want to see God coming true in your life. You want to see God meeting a need. There's one thing that's so true in our life that we all need to develop. Everything that God leads us through, everything that God guides us through is always towards one thing. What was that? Guides us towards complete dependence upon Him. Complete dependence upon Him. Why? Why is Jesus doing that? in every journey, every trip of our lives, because man will fail us. Man will disappoint us. Circumstances will change. Our friends will change. Our, employee, our employment will change. The economy will change. The government will change. The country will change. But you know what? God said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? If you look to people, you look to situations, circumstances, it will change and you get disappointed. Look to me. 
Dependence. Everybody listen here. Dependence is a word. It is inescapable. inescapable. You cannot escape from the word dependency. We all need to depend on God. Amen. And just as the sheep places complete trust in the shepherd, so too we must truly, solely trust God and believe God. That's why in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6 says this. Everybody read with me if you may. Can I? Can you read with me or not? Don't let me be so lonely reading the scripture this morning. Can I not? Okay, everybody read together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Amen? Some Bible say He will direct your path. He will guide you. He will steer you through. He will shield you. He will hold you by your hand and guide you through. Just like a blind man do not know the place. God said, just as long as you held on to my hand, I will guide you through. Some people say, I'm a big girl. I became Tala already. Indian is Tala, isn't it? Tala is Tala. Tala. I'm a, I'm a hate. I don't need people anymore. I don't depend on any people anymore. I depend on myself. But God said, you know what? Till the day we die, we still need to hold on to His hand. How many of you know that God never let go of hands? Come on, lift your hands up. God never let go of His hands. Who let go of our hands? We. We. We are the one that let go of God's hand. Not God. Not God. Number two, I shall not lack nurture. I shall not lack nurture. Psalm 23, verse 3, the second, first part says, He refreshes, restores my soul. He refreshes, restores my soul. God nurtures and cares for us even as we make a mess of ourselves. You know, you know, as I was reading Philip Keller, you know, he, 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 he said this about the sheep, you know. I, I, I studied about the sheep many times, I never come across this. He, he put a phrase there, cast down sheep. And he said this, what does it mean cast down sheep? You know, sheep when they're in a full grown of uh, heavy and long fleas, when they try to lie down, and as it lies down, it has to stretch out to relax. And when they stretch out to relax, it says that the sheep is so big and so heavy and so tiny. How many know sheep got very tiny legs, very thin legs? And, uh, and uh, as it relaxes and try to stretch and relaxes and lie down, you know what happened? Most of the time, most of the time, it loses balance and will roll to one side. The rest and roll to one side. Why? Because it has lost its central center gravity. The sheep will panic and find itself upside down. And in this position, you know this is biological, all right? Uh, in this position, gases built up in the body of the sheep, cutting off circulation to the legs. And if not corrected, the sheep will die in hours. If it's not corrected, the sheep will die in hours. And the only one who can restore the sheep is the shepherd. That's why the shepherd has to be around all the time. That's why God has to be around all the time. Sometimes we are like cast down sheep as well. We are spiritually on our backs, helpless, bleeding, spiritually sick. Don't you think so? Sometimes we walk through our, because of certain things, because of certain people, because of certain circumstances, we get angry, we get upset. We stop living our life the way we're supposed to live. We stop behaving the way we're supposed to behave. We stop functioning the way we're supposed to function. We stop living the way we're supposed to live and serving the way we're supposed to serve. We became spiritually sick and we need to come to the shepherd and say, God, help me. Help me. Help me. We need to come to Jesus and ask Him to restore us back to grace in Him. You know, on our own, we cannot. We need God to help us. 
And I did a little bit of reading as well afterwards. I just share with you later, just a quick one afterwards. You know, in John 20, this is what Jesus did for Peter. You remember Peter denied him three times? You remember that? At the Last Supper, he talked about it. Peter boldly said, I will not, I will die for you. You remember that? But after, the, the, after he was caught, he was whipped, he was tortured, Peter denied him three times. But what did Jesus do? When he denied Jesus three times, the rooster broke, right? And do you know, as Jesus was taken out, the rooster crow, Jesus turned back and took a side glance at Peter. He said, Peter, he did not say anything uh, from his eyes. He, come, he related the message, Peter, I told you. I mentioned to you. Don't be proud, don't be arrogant. And the Bible said, Peter disappeared for a while. But do you know, when Jesus reappeared himself, when all of them went fishing, he called out from the shore and, 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 and said, throw the net to the other side. Who was the first person to remember that? Peter. Before Peter came and followed Jesus, he fished the whole night with his gang of fishermen and they caught nothing. And they came back towards the shore and Jesus said, friend, have you caught anything? Nothing. He said, why don't you throw the thing to the other side? Go again. Put it onto the other side. He said, Lord, you must be crazy. I'm a fisherman all my life. My family members are fishermen. Andrew said, if Jesus says so, my brother, do it. Don't go ahead, do it. Take skull, do it. Long time, I never use these words. Huh? Forgive me. And Peter threw it onto the other side. The Bible said they caught, isn't it? More than what they could ever thought of, expected. And Peter, when, when he heard this voice, he said, Sound familiar. He threw it on the other side. He caught the fishes. The Bible said, even before the boat reached the dry ground, he, he, he jumped down and he ran to the master. You know what Jesus did? Jesus never rebuked him. Jesus never corrected him. Jesus comes to him and restores him back to health back to health and he restored Peter's soul. Church, listen for a while. Everybody look at me for a while. Everybody look at me for a while. How do we know we are spiritually sick? Let me give you a clue. How do we know we are spiritually sick? It's when our negative, our latitude is negative. When we're always angry, we're always complaining, we're always getting upset. Our, we are sick spiritually. Very easy. Are you with me? When a person is humanly, physically sick, everything seems to be the wrong one. Right now, cannot drink, cannot eat, cannot sleep. Fever here, fever there, pain here, pain there. Upset here, upset here. Everything, no peace. How do we know we are spiritually sick when our attitude is negative? We are spiritually sick. The Bible says we need to come to the Lord. You know, it's interesting. If you look at John 15, Jesus talked about the wine. He said, he said, I am the wine. You are the branches. You remember that? John chapter 15. He said, I am. I am. I'm not a. I'm not the. I am. Jesus is the wine. And he says in verse 2, John 15 verse 1, talk about that. I am the wine. You are the branches. Verse 2, he said, he said, I cut off every branch that does not bear fruit. You know, interesting, you know, I was trying to look into the Bible, a phrase, a word that I can change it a little bit. So I went to the Greek to study the word, cut off. He said, he cuts off every branch that does not bear fruit. Do you know, interesting, the word cut off in the Greek is the word called airo, A-I-R-O. And the word airo can also mean lift up. Not just only cut off, also lift up. 
and as well as take away, as well as cut off. It simply means they are, you see, some branches and some trees, their branches go to the ground so much it can hardly bear fruit. The, 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 the garden have to lift up a branch, spray some water to clean it, and then put it up again. You know, you understand what I'm saying? In some cases, it's cutting off, but it also can mean he lift up. When we are down, he lifts us up. When we are sick, he lifts us up. When we fall, he lifts us up. When we fail, he lifts us up. When we are hurt, when we discover, he lifts us up as well. I shall not lack nurture. Why? When we come to him, he lifts us up. Amen. I thank God for that. He never judged, He never condemned. He lift us up. Number three, I shall, lack, I shall not lack guidance. Amen. Psalm 23, verse 3, second part say, He guides me along the paths for His name's sake. He died for us. You and I are important. You and I are special. He, 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 he put your name at the, at, at, at the palm of His hand. He always, you are precious, you are special to Him. He will not let you go on your own way for long. He will, he will like stubborn animals like sheep, you know, they want to go their own way. After they are fed, they are happy to go their own way. The shepherd will just say, okay, you go for a while. And but when the sheep go their own way, it gets lost. You know what the shepherd does? He will bring them back from barrenness to fruitfulness. Like a sheep, we all are creatures of habits, conditioned by habits. You know, when we are blessed of the Lord, when we receive the Lord, when we, and God comes into our life, we are so thankful, we are born again, we are so thankful, we are saved, we are so thankful, we got to know God. But after some time, whether you don't like it, we go back to our old habit. Ayah, you know, gambling a bit is okay. Ayah, then why am I going to do this a bit is okay. Behave like that, okay, like that is okay. Like that is okay. We are people conditioned by habits. We need to ask God to help us to change. We worship other gods. We go back. You know, the Israelites, how many times God has to save them? How many God's time spare them? But yet, when they are blessed, when everything goes well, they go back to their old gods. For you and I, it may not be an idol. It may not be the old God. It is God like time, gaming, drinking. A handphone is more important than reading the Bible. All these are idols. If they're far more important than anything else in our life, something is wrong. Hello. If playing games, I'm not putting a condemnation on you. That's your business between you and God. It's not my business. But I'm telling you, it can be an idol. It can be an idol. If it controls you, you have to play. You have to watch pornography. You have to drink. You don't drink, you will die. It is a bondage. Then they become your idol. Where does God guide us? The Bible says He guides us along the paths. In paths, right path. He guides us along right path or path of righteousness. He always leads us to the right track. You know, some people tell me Christianity is very boring. How do you know? Oh, we cannot do this, we cannot do that, you cannot do this, you can No. When you come here, did you say do's and don'ts? Did we put a big sign that said do's and don'ts? No. When you receive the Lord, we teach you what the Bible says. And the Bible comes in our heart, the Bible works within us to change us. And we make a decision for ourselves when wisdom comes. Are you with me or not? When wisdom comes, wisdom comes when the word of God comes. I know I should not get drunk. I know I should not gamble. I know I should not womanize. womanize. I know I should not do this. I know I know should not do that. It's not a do and don't say. It is the conviction of the heart when we grow in the Lord. A young child, you tell them, don't do this, don't do that. They will still do, correct or not? It's satu kali they cannot baka. Then they know. 
God guide us to path of righteousness for his name's sake. Two more points, I go to very quickly. One, uh, four, I shall not, I shall not lack safety. You know, the Bible tells us, one, during times of difficulty and danger, Psalms 23 verse 4, even though I walk through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, I will, not, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know what happened? The Bible tells us when we go to the most difficult times, most trying times, you know what? He says to you and I, I am there to comfort. I'm there to protect. I'm there to give the grace to go through. Amen. True Christianity is not always mountaintop experiences. Sometimes it can be in the dark valley struggle and difficulties in our lives. Secondly, during times of blessing and abundance, 23 verse 5 says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflow. You know what it says here? You know, when God said to you and I, in the high mountain, I am there. In the low valley, I am there. He said to you and I, you know what? Every time when you and I go to difficult time, you know what God said? I am your Jehovah Nisi. I am your banner. I am your victor. I am your strength. I am your enablement. Amen. When you say, I can't, He said, I am with you. You can when he allowed you, when he set the table before you in the face of the enemy, when the enemy come and attack, he allows you to go to, he said to you, I am with you. I go through with you. Yeah, I know the law family as well, they, and the Wong, you know, they're going through with Eric's situation. Eric is much better now. Thank God for that. Amen? Amen? Eric is much better now. Yeah. He's waiting for the titanium cap to come on the scalp, right? And then after that, a while more, he will be discharged. Can I invite you to stand with me? Let's pray for Eric at the time as this. Can I ask you to say a prayer in 30 seconds to the Lord for Eric? Amen. Say a word of prayer for Eric. Say, Lord, touch Eric, heal Eric, restore Eric. Amen. Father, we are grateful to you for your mercy and your grace upon Eric Law. Even though it was a bad accident, but yet he has came out of danger. Though he is still struggling with his memories, but you are his shepherd. You are his healer. You are his provider. Lord, we pray right now that you, we speak healing into his brain that you will touch his brain and restore his health, restore his memory and every part of his body. Lord, we believe in you that you are a miracle-working God. And we believe in you, are you are his shepherd. Lord, that you will heal him. You will bring a miracle so that he will be a testimony to his family members and that all of them will come to know Jesus. I pray, God, that you'll work a miracle as you come into your hands. You are His shepherd, and you will lead Him through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give a hand to the Lord, if you may. Thank you. You may be seated. Let me skip through. When you are blessed, He said to you and I, Hey, I am still around. Don't leave me when you're blessed. Some people leave God when they're poor, when they're struggling. Some people leave God when they are blessed. He said, hey, don't leave me when you're blessed. Remember me. All that you have come from me. I give you the energy. I give you the health. I give you the intelligence. I give you the wisdom. I give you the ability and the power to gain wealth, to make wealth, to prosper. Number five, I shall not lack promise. Psalms 23 verse 6 says, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Amazing, isn't it? All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We find in these final words, two promises. One, the promise of goodness and mercy in this life. One more time. The promise of goodness and mercy in this life. As long as we're still living on the face of this earth, He promised goodness and mercy. He'll go with us till the day we die or till the day Jesus returns. 
He will always give us a second chance. He will always be good to us because it's not a time for judgment. Once death, come judgment. When the Lord returns, come judgment. Secondly, the promise of eternity in the next life. Hallelujah. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell with God forever. He said, one day when we leave this earth, we will meet God face to face and we will dwell in His presence forever. Musicians, will you come? These words are promise that makes that neither my life nor God's promise will ever falter. He made the promise and He will keep His promise. He will keep His promise. Can I understand? Can I ask of you this morning, really? Is the Lord a shepherd? Or is the Lord your shepherd? Can we tell ourselves this morning and say, God, I want to make you my shepherd. My shepherd. Not just my mom, my dad, my family members, my friends, shepherd. You are my shepherd. You are my shepherd. Amen. If you're not well today, Spiritually, physically, come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. How are you spiritually? Are you sick? Are you well? Are you happy? If you are, if you are healthy spiritually, you are happy. Or are you sick? No excitement in life at all. Hmm? Are you sick physically as well? Whatever you and I are facing and going through in life, today can I ask of you as we look to the Lord, to sing one song as Derek leads us in a song with his team. Shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my